If Cecil represents the past of this community with a continuing legacy and influence, our moderator-elect represents its future. I want you, in case you haven't seen Christy McMillan Goodwin, I want you to see her. She is seated behind me. I want her to stand. Please stand. Stand, Christy. Oh, you are standing, aren't you? <laughs> this is Christy. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Christy McMillan Goodwin is a 38-year-old woman. I don't know whether she's the youngest moderator, but if not the youngest, one of the youngest moderators. She, had turned, she attended that first gathering of Concerned Baptist 20 years ago as a college student at Furman. She grew up in the ministry, under the ministry of my friend Marion Aldridge and graduated from BTSR and, and then served for the past 15 years as associate pastor of Oakland Baptist Church in Rock Hill, South Carolina. She has never known another Baptist community other than Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. I don't know what comes to your mind when you think about CBF. But for me, it's people like Cecil and Christy and a multitude of folks in between and before and after. It's names and faces who share common values and core commitments. They have enriched my life, changed my life. This is the result of a movement of God's spirit and it is holy and beautiful. But CBF is not only a community, it is also an institution. This is also who we are. We are an institution with organizational structure, bylaws, budgets, governing procedures, funding practices, personnel policies, and legal status. We have a foundation and a benefits board, and though we do not own property, we rent offices, and though we do not own institutions, we partner with them in a structured way. When we created CBF 20 years ago, we organized an institution with the best thinking we had. That organization reflected its time, but it was also in many ways fresh and innovative. Through the years, we have given attention to institutional matters, amending bylaws, altering practices, and in many ways, I believe, we have matured institutionally. In April of this year, I called the leadership of more than 20 partnering ministries, along with state and regional leadership and senior staff from Atlanta, to begin planning for the 2011 General Assembly, which will actually be our 20th anniversary. Babs Ball, who will chair that 2011 assembly, co-hosted this event with me and also funded it with a gracious grant from the Ball Foundation. From that retreat, there emerged a strong consensus that we need greater clarity and commitment around our institutional identity, mission, and organizational structure. So, I asked our moderator, Hal Bass, to appoint a task force, a team, a committee. We're, we're calling it the 2012 task force because it might take two years for it to function. Charge that committee with the responsibility of helping vision and helping all of us vision the missional and organizational future of CBF. This task force has been blessed and endorsed by the Coordinating Council. It will report both to the Council and to this assembly in the next two years. They will be asked to address the following three questions. What is the best model of community that fosters missional collaboration rather than competition for resources? Two. How can we refocus and streamline organizational structures in order to provide leadership and resources for churches and other ministries to respond more effectively to global challenges? And three, how do we help Baptist churches and organizations embrace their identity as partners within this community? In a recent edition of Christian Century, there was an article by Greg Jones, Dean of the Duke University School of Divinity. He wrote these words, I have come to care deeply about what Hugh Hecklow calls thinking institutionally, 
attending to what it means to establish, preserve, reform, and renew institutions as a part of our commitment to the importance for human flourishing. In that same edition, there was a statement by Parker Palmer, who's had a profound influence on my understanding of leadership. Palmer said, all my life I have loved and worked with institutions, but what I've discovered is that institutions don't love you back. But he said, I am still committed to our being change agents within institutions. So in the coming months, we will attend to our institutional well-being and we will nurture our institutional well-being as, our, as, as we continue to nurture the movement of God's Spirit among us as a community. This leads me briefly to the text that I want to speak about. 1 Corinthians 3.9 For we are God's servants working together. Because this too is who we are as CBF. We are God's servants working together. Say it. We are God's servants working together. This verse has provided something of a biblical and theological foundation for me as to why we as Baptists who cherish individual priesthood and local church autonomy cooperate in ministry. We do it because we are God's servants working together. The word fellowship not only defines our identity, but the way we engage in mission. We do it together. We do it in partnership with God and we do it in partnership with one another. It is a radical biblical idea. It is much easier to use the rhetoric of partnership than it is to practice it. It is much easier to talk the talk than to walk the walk. When we are God's servants working together, no one is controlled by the other. There is a mutuality of care for the well-being of the other. There is humility and there is generosity. Why? Because these charisms are deep within us. Because of who we are in Christ. Because we are children of God. If we live out of this identity, We can move beyond self-interest and institutional self-preservation. We're not destined to act out of fear or work in isolation or in competition. What will it mean for Cooperative Baptist Fellowship to live out this identity into the future? I cannot fully answer that question, but I do believe this. I do believe that there will come a day on this earth when who we are in Christ and who we are with one another in Christ will be the way we serve him. The kingdom way of service, inaugurated but not completed, is humility and generosity. It's not a program, it's not a system, but it is a way of life, a way of being together and of working together. Organic, interwoven, interdependent church of Jesus Christ and when the church of Jesus Christ works together is not like any other community or any other institution in the world. It's not like government. It's not like business. It's not like the academy. It's not like another NGO. It's more like a family than anything else. Scripture says it's like a body with each part caring for the other part of the body. And then this body ministers in this world as a body, living, breathing as the mystical body and presence of Christ. This is who we are. And when we live and minister out of who we are, working together, working together both as community and as institution, but when we work together out of who we are, then things happen that are both natural and supernatural, redemptive and renewing, personal and social, temporal and eternity. And so we are children of God, and so we are God's servants working together. Amen.